You see the reason why you cannot harbor anything that is not right in your heart? Because it will grant all the desires of your heart. If they are good desires, you go home with good things. But if you have wrong desires, you go home with wrong things. You see how dangerous it is. You see how dangerous it is. The same thing applies to when you are called for anointing. When the church says, tomorrow we are anointing. We give you the advance warning. So that you can prepare your heart and your mind. Because when God, when the time of anointing comes, anointing is like authority and power and position. Look, in the military, this is not the message. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is saying this. Hallelujah. In the military, when you are a lieutenant, they will not give you more than what you can command. They will give you few men. People you can count and manage. You understand? When you become a colonel to brigadier area, then they give you a brigade to command. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, the authority and the, and the power given to you is according to what you can handle. When you are a general, then they give you a whole battalion to command. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? So, therefore, if anointing is also authority, Giving. Don't you know that God will come and see your capacity? Then as they anoint you, he will give you authority according to your capacity. Hallelujah. If you are a lieutenant, he will not give you a, a brigade of armies to command. If you are a colonel, he will not give you a battalion of people to command. He will give you those you can manage, those that your heart can control. That is why when we announce that tomorrow there's going to be anointing, prepare your mind and your heart. Hallelujah. Load great things into it. Conceive great ideas. Do you understand what I'm saying? Enlarge your coast. Before the anointing. Because on the day of anointing, God is going to see how much you have prepared. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are talking about about your daily bread for you and your family. We just need to pay our bills and we just need to... If that is the f all you can do, when the anointing shall come upon you, it will keep you within that range. Do you understand the danger? That's why you continue to receive anointing, anointing, and you remain the same. Because God is anointing what is in your heart. Do you understand? But if you declare yourself as a general, and you say you want to rule the whole world, you want God to give you England and USA, adding Nigeria and Ghana to it. Hallelujah. The day of the anointing, God will come and he will look at your heart and he will give you that. Then suddenly you start doing great things. 
Do you understand? That many times we have missed the opportunities because of our limitations in understanding. Hallelujah. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is saying this. Hallelujah. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is saying this. This is not my message. Hallelujah. But I, I believe that there's someone here who has been wondering, why am I in this position? All the time I'm always here. I prayed, I fasted, I've done everything. But I'm still here. What's happening to me? God is saying to you that I am anointing what is in your heart. I'm fulfilling your heart desires. Hallelujah. So you must expand your coast. Hallelujah. I'm sure next time when our father will say is anointing, I am sure Bethesda member, members, hallelujah, you will start to do great things. Hallelujah. You will go there and take everything. Hallelujah. You will go there and prosper. Because you will not go with empty heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Transformation. 2017 is a year of transformation. You know, and when our Father, when God declared this year as the year of transformation and spoke it through our Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A scripture came with it. That's Revelation what? 21.5. Okay, let's read that. Let's see. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and, and true. Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. God said he's making everything new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I was in Nigeria when our father declared 2017 the year of transformation. Of course, I always uh, listen to him every day. Hallelujah. So, I know all the lectures that he has given concerning this transformation. Hallelujah. But I just want to bring to your memories those instructions so that you don't get carried away that you are in the year of transformation. You know, many events could have taken place in your life that will made you to forget that this is truly a year of transformation. God said, write it down because these are trustworthy words. These are things that will come to pass. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can hinder it. There will be a transformation. Amen. Hallelujah. But I want to prepare you so that you can start walking in that frame of mind of reforming yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then let's turn our Bible to the book of Romans. I'm going to give so many uh, scriptures today. Just write them down. When you get home, you can, you can go through them. Hallelujah. Because all the scriptures are saying the same thing. So just write them down. In Romans 12, in verses 1 and 2, he said, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, 
to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Verse 2, he said, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Is good and pleasing and perfect will. That scripture is telling us that we should not conform any longer to the ways that people, your normal day-to-day ways of doing things. If you want to be transformed. Hallelujah. He said you, you, you must not continue to do what the world people are doing. You must do something different. Do we understand that? And he said, he said you can also do this by renewing of your mind. Underline the word mind. That means when you renew your mind, you will become transformed. Hallelujah. Then you can walk according to the will of God. Then the will of God can be fulfilled. Hallelujah. If God is telling us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, it means it's letting you know that you are the one to make it happen. Do you understand? When God is saying, by renewing of your mind, when God is saying that, God is saying to you that it is your responsibility to do that. Because he has given you the ability, the power that is within you to renew your mind. Today, I will show you some scriptures that will tell you how to renew your mind. Because that is what will bring transformation. If you don't renew your mind, there is no transformation. And you will, know, you will understand the reason today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Transform your life by changing the way you think. And the only way to do that is to renew your mind. There's something about mind. Hallelujah. In Psalm 51 verse 12. The song that we sang some time ago, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. And verse 12 says, restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. A willing spirit to sustain me. You see, if you, if you study the scriptures, you will see so many places where God said, I will put, give you a new spirit. I will give you a new spirit. I will give you a new spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have a willing spirit, a willing spirit is a spirit that you can teach. It's a spirit that can listen to God. Is the spirit that can follow the, 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 the ways of God. Hallelujah. 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 And you can, you can do this. You can correct your spirit when you renew your mind. Hallelujah. That was a year that our father was lecturing us about mind and heart. I don't know if some of you are here then. And he was telling us that your mind is a processor that will process your 
your some messy informations and produce some other informations or images or pictures. Hallelujah. That means when your mind receives information, it is the duty of your mind. Its duty is it will process that information. Do you understand it? And it will give you the image of that information. Then you can visualize it. If somebody, for example, is talking to you about a mansion somewhere, and is telling you that this mansion has uh, 200 hectares of acres of land around it. As you are hearing that information, your mind is processing it. And you can see the image of that mansion. You can visualize it. You can see the acreage that surrounds the house. Or oh, is there someone among you that cannot that cannot do that? Can't if your mind has not been giving you images, you should let us know because we, you need serious prayers. <laughs> Hallelujah! Because that means the mind is not functioning. His job is to collect information and reproduce an image that you can visualize that you can see. Amen? If somebody is telling you about there's some vehicles in Lagos they call Mulwe. I'm sure the moment I mentioned it, your mind had already given you the picture of Mulwe. Hallelujah. That's the mind that is working. Hallelujah. That is the mind that is working. That is his job. That's why the Bible says you must always renew it daily. Because if you don't renew it, the information that you, the, the output, when you feed your mind with so many informations, the output comes in form of uh, thoughts. You remember our father treated thoughts when he was doing law initially. You remember, he was always talking about thoughts, committing thoughts. Hallelujah. Committing. Uh, <laughs> May God bless our dad. You know, because through him, we all know law now. We are all lawyers. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for him. He's a great man of God. You know? He can influence you with his own attitude and everything. He can, you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he was teaching us about thoughts, thoughts is the output of your mind. Mind will produce a thought. You know, I want to go slow. If I cannot finish what I'm trying to put across, I will pray that next time God will give us another opportunity that we, I can continue, but I don't want to rush it. Hallelujah. I want to go slow. The mind will receive information from all senses. Hallelujah. And this mind, this mind that we're talking about, we now produce his own ideas from those information that he gathered. Hallelujah. And he will produce things like thoughts, imaginations. You, you, you understand that? When you start imagining things, those things are from your mind. When you have a thought, it's also from your mind. Your mind is the producers of those two things. Hallelujah. But if your thoughts... 
Let me tell you something, a basic thing. Do you know the reason why God gave us mind? He gave you mind so that you can become like him. So that you can create things like God. So that you can also be a creator. So that you can also be an achiever. You can do something. You can create things. You understand? One of the jobs of the mind is to create things. And bring it to be. He has the power to bring it to be. Mind is so powerful. Do you understand that? So if your mind is now producing thoughts, and if this thought is not right, hallelujah, if the thought is not good, the result that you get is what? Bad product comes out of that. But if the thought is good, what you get out of it is what? Good products. So we can now see that good and bad can develop out of a thought produced by the mind. We understand that. We understand that. Okay. Hallelujah. Because what we are trying to do, what, what we are trying to do today is this. Let us expose where the problem is. And let us see how we can overcome it. So that we can be transformed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The definition that I give to mind, let me read it out for you. The mind is the faculty of man's reasoning and thoughts. It holds the power of imagination and recognition. Through the mind, you can recognize things. You understand what I'm saying? And appreciation. All of these are the outputs of your mind. And it's responsible for processing feelings and emotions. If you are angry all the time, it's your mind that is producing it. If you are a happy guy all the time, it's your mind that is producing it. Hallelujah. When your eyes focus on an image... It is your mind that interprets that image. And that is when you have understanding. Hallelujah. When you look at something, it is your mind that will tell you what it is. Hallelujah. Thoughts are generated from the mind. And the manifestation from thoughts can be profitable and unprofitable. That means your thoughts can generate good things that is profitable to you. Your thoughts can also generate bad things that is not profitable to you. That means you can create something that is profitable. You can also create something that is not profitable. Don't forget what I said, that God gave you mind so that you can be a creator. So that you can have something that you use to create things. When God said, let there be light, that, that statement came out of his mind. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to expose mind so that when you, you can know how to renew it, you can easily renew it. You know, I will teach you something today that 
problem will no longer be a problem. Yeah. Hallelujah. When they come, you can easily, you know, thoughts can come, but I will tell you how to deal with it instantly. Amen? When Jesus said in the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 18, he said, are you so dull? Don't you see that nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into the heart, but into his stomach. And then out of his body, in saying this, Jesus declared all foot clean. Hallelujah. Then verse 20, he went on. What comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. What comes out of a man is what makes a man unclean. What the thoughts that comes out of a man is what makes you unclean or clean. What comes out of the mind is what makes you unclean. If you, if you allow your mind to produce unclean things, you are unclean. Hallelujah. And in verse 21, he said, For from within, out of men's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, tears, mother, adultery. Verse 22, Greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All this evil, verse 23, all this evil come from inside and make a man unclean. You see, all those things that Jesus mentioned, they are the end products, the output product of mind. When Jesus said, not what you eat will make you unclean. It is what comes out of your mind that makes you unclean. Do you understand that? And I said to you, when your mind is, is, starts producing thoughts or imagination, if they are wrong, if they are not good, evil thoughts, you are thinking of how to kill somebody. You are thinking about how to hinder somebody. Those are evil thoughts. Those are thoughts, but they are evil. Those comes out as sin. All those things that Jesus listed, they are as a result of the output of your mind. You can see Sometimes ago, our father was referring to mind as the enemy within. You know? Some parable says, if the enemy of inside the house, they don't kill. The one outside cannot. Do we understand that? So, the mind is the enemy within. Though it was designed, it was given to you to do great things. But because of so many informations, and I'm going to show you how you, information gets to your mind. Because of so many informations. And the moment the information gets to the mind, the mind will process it. And produce a thought and produce an image. And if you continue to meditate on that image, then the information goes into your heart. Then it becomes a reality. Because the moment it enters your heart, your mouth will speak it out. Do you understand? That's why God said the thoughts in the heart belongs to the man. But God listening to the words, the, the, the tongue, 
what the tongue is saying to fulfill it. You understand? So that statement also tells us that when, when your mind is processing, don't worry. Let the mind be processing. You have the power to, to delete it. You know, I use the word delete because those of you who understand IT, you know that if you, if you mistakenly type a wrong word, you can highlight it and do what? And delete it. That is the weakness of your mind. You cannot resist deleting. You can delete. You can delete. Don't worry about the numbers of information that is coming because you watch television, you listen to friends, you read papers. All this information goes to the mind. And it will process it and create an image. Amen? But you must not dwell on it. That's why the Bible says, what is lovely, what is beautiful, what is wonderful, meditate day and night on these things. Hallelujah. Because when you do, you will produce good product. But if you meditate on something that is not good, on sickness, especially sickness, that's, that's one of our, our problems. The moment you feel something in your body, you, know, you start thinking about other things too. You know? And when you are thinking about this, you are feeling what? The mind. When you are feeling the mind, the mind is processing it immediately. It's an obedient devil. He will process whatever thing that you sent to it. Hallelujah. And if you continue to talk about it, you continue to talk about it, you get worried about it, and you continue to go and do research about it, and you are concerned about it, then the, process, the full processing is complete. It will now send it down for printing. Send it to the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the tongue is the printer. Hallelujah. And your tongue will now print it out. Hallelujah. It becomes a reality. Amen. You can see why some of us remain in sickness. Because of mind. Because of mind. Because of mind. Psalm 66, 18 said, If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Because it's, it's normal. If you process sinful thoughts, and it goes into your heart, and it comes out through your tongue, God said he will not listen to it. You know? That's another, 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 another uh, uh, how will I put it? A device that God placed that if evil is coming from the heart, God will not listen to it. Hallelujah. Because the moment you speak it out, it's supposed to come to pass. Because the job of God is to listen to what your tongue is saying and honor it. If the mind is now feeding the tongue with sinful thoughts and sinful things, God said here, he will not listen. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 
Psalm 53, verse 1, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. You see? The fool says in his heart. That means, first, he thought about it from his where? From the mind. I want us to discuss. That scripture says, a fool says in his heart, not in his mind. In his heart, there is no God. What what takes place in the mind of this in the in the body of this fool? The mind he was first of all considering it in his mind, and the mind processed that thought and developed that thought, and that thought went into the heart, and he now said he said it out. There is no God. Can you see it? Can you see it? May God deliver us from mind. You see, some, God revealed something to us in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 4, verse 16. This is about Nebuchadnezzar. He said, let his mind be changed from that of a man and let him be given the mind of an animal. You, you, you see the operation that God did there? He removed the mind of a man and put the mind of animal into Nebuchadnezzar. And if you go to verse 33, he said immediately what has been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like cattle. You know, simple operation. Removing the mind of a man and putting the mind of animal. When I saw this, I, I was really, I, I really thank God. It is a great revelation that if you can renew your mind, you can do whatever you want to do. You can be whatever you want to be. If you are saying, I want to be this, 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 it's not good enough saying it. Let it come from your mind first. Process it. Visualize it. Imagine it. God said, I'm doing a new thing. Can't you see it? Can't you perceive it? Can't you see it? You see through your mind. Can't you see it? It's talking about mind. Because it is the duty of your mind to create the image of the great thing that you want to be. If you want to be very successful, you want people to patronize you, you want people to recognize you, first of all, think about it in your mind. See it. With your spiritual eye. That means your mind. And continue to talk about it. Continue to talk about it. Continue to think about it. Continue to meditate about it. Then the information will now be registered in your heart. The moment they send it into your heart, it's a done deal. It's what? A done deal. You can see that you can create your own world. You can create your own joy. And of course, you can create sadness too. You can create unhappiness around you. When you wake up every morning, you have two options. Either to be happy or to be sad. So you have the power to create these two options. Hallelujah. 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 God said, let's remove the mind of a man and let's give him the mind of animal.
In the first, uh, first Chronicles 28, verse 9. First Chronicles 28. And you, my son, this is David talking to Solomon. And you, my son Solomon, acknowledge God of your father and serve him with wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. And with what? A willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every motives. Motives comes from the mind. Hallelujah. Motives behind your, what you are saying is from your mind. And only God knows that. Because we cannot see your mind. We don't know what you are you are using your mind to, to produce, but God knows it. Hallelujah. He searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. Hallelujah. You see thoughts there again? You know? And thought is from mind. You remember that? You know? So God, when you are talking to God, is looking at your mind. When you are talking to him, he's looking at your mind. First to know what you are processing right away as you are talking to him. Then if what you are processing has gone to the point of taking it to the heart, God also sees the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are rounding up shortly. Many times we underestimate the power and possibility of our thoughts. Until you change your thinking, you cannot change your life. Do you understand that? You know, many times we underestimate the power of possibilities that you can do through your thoughts. Some don't even know it, that you, through thoughts, you can, you can do so much in, in life. Hallelujah. And until you change your thinking, you cannot change your life. You cannot upgrade yourself. You cannot go, go from economic class to first class. Hallelujah. If you don't think, if you don't change the way you think. If you want to enjoy good life, change your thinking. If you want to enjoy success in everything that you lay your hands upon, change your thinking. If you want to be well on earth, change your thinking. Your life will always go in the direction of your thoughts. Your life will always go in the direction of your thoughts. You cannot change it. That's the, the later principle. Hallelujah. Your life is the outward manifestation of the inner working of your mind. You know, we all pray for manifestation. You pray for manifestation. You pray for manifestation. Your life is the artwork. Whatever you are today, whatever you see yourself, whatever you are, is the artwork's manifestation of the inner working of your mind. If your mind is working in ugliness, you are ugly. If your mind is working on beautiful things, you are beautiful. Hallelujah. And thoughts are pictures of the mind that have constructive or destructive possibilities. You know? 
it is very, very important for Christians to understand the power of the mind. It's good for you to understand it. Otherwise, you pray amiss. You pray amiss. You continue to pray over something and nothing is happening. All because God is looking at your mind. Hallelujah. It is also good to know where the thoughts, anyway, we have discussed that, the thoughts is from the mind. And thoughts also can come from your own reasoning. When our, in January, when our father was teaching on this, he was telling us that, uh, you, uh, you know, you can veil yourself. And devil can also veil you. And not knowing, the turning away from God also can veil you. Do you really understand? Do, you, do we remember that? Do we remember that, that our father says so? That you can veil yourself. The same thing, thoughts, your own reasoning can generate thoughts. Thoughts can also come from God. And it can also come from Satan. All of these sources of thoughts, they all go into your mind for processing. If you are the one that fails to read your books, the Word of God, and you don't know the Word of God, you will not be able to discern which one is from God or which one is from the devil. Because devil will always imitate that of God. It will be so difficult for you to see the difference. There is, there is something that they will use to feel in those days. Spot the difference. They will put the two pictures together. You know, and they will all look, the two pictures will look alike. But they will put some little, little Differences here and there, and they will ask you to spot it. Amen? The same way, if you don't know the word of God, it will be difficult for you to, to, to spot the thoughts of the devil. Because devil has so repackaged its, its information that good looks like Bad looks like good. And you can be rightly wrong. That's why you see so many preachers today, and they think they are preaching the word of God, but they are misleading others. Because, you know, the difference is very, very, very difficult to pick out. Unless you are in a church like this, you know, you know our, our father is a preacher of righteousness. You know that? That is his calling. He's a preacher of righteousness. You can't take it out of him. You can't take it out of, out of his mouth. So if you come to his church, you must, you must hear it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But in some churches, it's not like that. They, are, they will repackage it that you don't, you go home, you think you have, you, have, you have heard the right thing. If you don't know the word of God, you will take no for an answer. So we have to be careful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will soon finish. Our common scriptures in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Behold there, underline it. It means see. See. Hallelujah. See. When you gave your life to Christ, you become a new what? Okay. But that same scripture is saying, see, all things are now new. See, behold. It is your responsibility to see. And what they ask you to see is not your these two, uh, two this your eyes. Is the eye of your spirit, which is your mind. Use your mind to see it. Do you understand that? You see, when you give your life and you become a new being, it is the inner. Let me let me tell you something. As I'm standing, I have the outer man. Outer man is this that you are looking at. Hallelujah. But inside of me, we have inner man, which is my spirit. And my mind is part of my inner man. My brain is part of my outer man. Do you understand that? You have to Two human beings now. The outer man that you are looking at, and the inner man that you cannot see. Then the outer man has brain. And walk with all the five senses. And walk with your nervous systems to pass information to every organs in your body. Do you understand that? The same thing your inner man has a mind that functions like a brain. The job of the mind, we have already discussed it. It will process information just like your brain will process. The brain also has spiritual senses. Just as your brain has senses, work with senses. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Amen. Amen. So it is the inner one that when you said you gave your life to Christ, you are talking about the life of your inner man. You are surrendering your soul and spirit to God. And that's why God can give you a new spirit, his own spirit, to walk with your inner man spirit. You understand it? So it is your inner man that gets born again. But the good thing is this. It is the inner man that controls the outer man. If you are sick in your body and you are treating your outer man, you are mistaken. You are wasting your time. Allow the inner man to control the outer body and you live in good health. And all of these things are done by only one guy called mind. Do we understand it now? Do we understand it now? So when, 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 when that scripture says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Use your inner mind to see it and process it. Visualize it. See only good things. See only great things. See yourself sitting among kings. See yourself sinking among princes. See yourself ruling. See, see, see new things. So what do you see? 
Some of you, you just see your only your job. You know, I have a good job. I thank God for that. You know, and that's all you see. Some people, I, I thank God, I have a two-room apartment now. You know, that's all you can see. And Revelation 21, 5 says, I am turning everything into, I'm making everything new. So it is you who must see it through your mind. Through your mind. Visualize it. Think about it. Meditate on it. Do you know that the dreams that you will always have when you go to bed and you dream, they are from the mind? They are materials that has been loaded into the mind, either by devil or by God or by yourself. The devil, your mind is not saying, I can process this in the daytime. This I can process in the daytime. The rest I will do it later. When it's later, when you are sleeping. Hallelujah. When you are sleeping, it will not start processing if, you, if what you have there is a wrong information. Then, of course, you, you, you cannot expect the kings to come into your dreams. You should expect some Mark's courage with Cain. To, <laughs> you, you know, you should expect snake to just appear. Hallelujah. These are all from the mind. And I said to you, you have control over your mind. You see, when this thought comes to you, do you know how to deal with it? Delete it! So simple. If you, are, if, you are, if you are traveling and you are thinking of accident, you say, I cancel that thought in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's canceled! If you are going for an interview and you are thinking of failure, disappointment, you say, I cancel that thought in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's canceled. But if you fail to cancel it, and you say it again and again, it goes into your heart. And of course, your tongue will print it out. You can see that your life is in your hand. What you make of it is what you see. You know, no matter how much you pray, these principles cannot be taken away. God gave them to you. Gave you the mind. He gave you heart. When you gave your life, he gave you so many things. He gave you eternal life. He gave you Holy Spirit. He gave you so many gifts. If you use them wrongly, it's your fault. But the most dangerous one among them is what we have treated. So if we are talking about the year of transformation, we are saying it's a man of it's a year to renew our mind. Paul said, my, he said, I renew it daily by day. Every day I renew it. He was talking to himself, really, that every day his own mind is renewed daily. Daily. And that's what I do. Because thoughts comes daily. Evil thoughts comes daily. So as they come, you do what? You delete it. You delete it. Even when you see a bad dream and you wake up out of it, you do what? You delete it. They are still within your mind. 
the dream that woke you up, the nightmare that you saw, is still within the mind. It has not gone into your heart. So you can delete it at that point. When it goes into your heart, it's difficult. It's only God. God said, I will renew your heart. That means I will, it will not delete it, but it will remove it. You see, in, in computer, you have a, a hard drive. Okay? Take that as your heart. Because you have loaded so many junk into it, when you ask God, grant me the request of my heart, don't you know you are cursing yourself? Don't you know? By telling God, grant me the request of my heart. If God should answer that prayer, you are gone. So what you do is this. You remove the hard drive that is slowing down your system. And put a new one. They are not too expensive nowadays. You put another one. If you have been using five gigabytes, you can go for 60 or I don't know. Hallelujah. Just remove it and put another one. God said, I will remove your heart of stone. He said, your heart of stone. Your heart, God can no longer look at it. He cannot separate evil from good. Everything is muddled up. You have loaded it with all manners of nonsense. God said, I will remove it. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. Because it is the heart that controls your spirit. If you have junk there, your spirit is confused. So, with this knowledge that we have today, because I have to stop now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have to stop. You know, but I'm begging you. Any thoughts that comes to you, don't be afraid of it. It's still within the realm of the mind. You can delete it. No matter how terrible it is. Let somebody tell you, I place a curse on you. Anyway, our father has told, told us a hundred times here that Christian cannot be cursed anyway. But if you are still that Christian that is worried about that, eh, be careful. Because if you continue to worry about it, it goes straight to where? To your heart. And Father, our God said, God said, He said, what is in the heart belongs to the man. <laughs> May good things belong to you. Amen. May only good things belong to you. Amen. God said, the thing of your heart belongs to you. He said, the one that you print out through your tongue, that's the one I will read. You understand it? So you, you, you know Thoughts can come from anywhere. Don't bother yourself about it. You know? The moment they come, remember to delete it. I delete it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I delete it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how many times. Yesterday, I, I sent my son to, uh, to go and buy something. And my grandson, went with him. And because my son was on this uh, uh, iPhone and this thing, my mind was telling me, hey, there could be accident too. Uh, you know, how will he look after the little boy? If the little boy is just walking behind and aimlessly without thinking, you know, then immediately I started to cancel. I cancel it. I cancel it. No accident in, in Jesus' name. I cancel it. You know, devil was suggesting all those things. You know? But I canceled it. Hallelujah. Don't think it is so light. Devil does not joke. Any suggestion from him is to harm you. So, when you receive it, delete it. Don't wait for another minute. If you send it again, delete it. If you send it again, delete it. If you send it again, delete it. 
Alléluia. 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 Delete it. He has given you the power and authority. Hallelujah. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Fear not, says God Almighty. Yes, I gave you the mind to be a good weapon for you to produce good things. But in, if the mind decided to be obeying the devil and cancel it, don't let it get into your heart. Hallelujah. And the way to, to, not, to not allow it to get into your heart is to continue to delete. Don't think about it, another word. Don't think about it. Because the more you think about it, it goes into where? To your heart. And the mouth will speak it out. Hallelujah. Can we all rise, please? You will lift up your voice and say Give to the me Lord, a new heart, Lord. A new heart, a new mind. God is the only one who can replace your hard drives. God is the only one who can re replace those uh, 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 parts. What do you call some parts are hard? Is it? Yes, but uh, software and... Uh, Hardware. Okay, hardware. God is the only one who can replace the hardware. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will say to the Lord, it looks funny, but it's real. Because he said it. He said, I will give you a new heart. So you will, and you saw what he did to Nebuchadnezzar. He removed his mind and gave him that of animal. So it's only God that can remove it. You can delete you cannot remove your mind because you are not the one who gave it to yourself. You understand? God is, God is the only one who can change your hard drive. Hardware. Drive. <laughs> yes, you have hard drive, but other parts of the computer is hardware. Software. Software is the system. Don't confuse me. I also went to... Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So you are going to tell the Lord that, Father, I stand before you. You see, I will say you lift up your hands to say it. Because Moses said, when I go out, I will lift up my hands. And the storm will stop. Hallelujah. So you will also lift up your hands and say, Father, Lord, I'm in agreement with you. Change my mind and my heart. I have contaminated them with so many thoughts. And then I cannot even present my heart to you. They are filthy. Father, Lord in heaven, there is no point cleaning it. But change it. Give me a new heart, Lord. Give me a new mind, Lord. According to your word in the scriptures, lift up your voice and pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I lift up my hand. I ask for a new heart and a new mind. Give me a new mind. Give me a new heart. Father God in heaven, give me a new mind, a new heart, a new spirit. Thank you, Lord, my God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we, we pray. Now, your last prayer is this. You will say to, the, to heaven that now I can see great things. Now I can see great things. The rain is over. I can see. 
I can see great things. Father, Lord in heaven, let it start happening in my life. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, Lord, I can see great things. I can see mighty things. I can see wonderful things happening to me. I enter it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I see great things. I see mighty things. I see lovely things. Father God, I enter into it. Thank you, Lord, my Father. My life has changed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty and holy name we pray. He changed my life.